Los Madanos College community. And thank you for having me at tonight's Coral Adventure. I am Dr. Khalid White, and I am so thrilled to be here as we talk about ethnic studies, art, and African-American gospel music tonight. I wanna to give a big thank you and a big shout out to the LMC Choir, the LMC community, and also to Professor Sylvester Henderson for giving me an opportunity to speak with you all this evening. I really do appreciate it. So when we're talking about the equity trinity, ethnic studies, art, and African-American gospel music, let's talk a little bit about how those intersect today, all right? By now, I'm sure that you all have heard, at least heard, of the terms like equity, CRT, or critical race theory, and ethnic studies. Even if their definitions are vague to you, the terms themselves have made national news and headlines, especially recently and in this current times of the global pandemic that we're in. So let me offer some basic analogies to help define the terms if they're still vague and hazy to you, all right? Allow me to share my screen so we can make it a little bit more understandable. Now, these particular images are very popular with this term equity in mind. And they kind of show the difference between equity and equality from a visual standpoint, right? Some argue that this might not be true equity or it doesn't really show what the term means. However, it helps us to kind of understand and get the concept, right? As you see these individuals in the pictures, each of them on the equity side has, on the equity side has something a little bit different to help them view the game, okay? But think about this. I like to point out and another analogy in regards to equity. And think about this, if you will. Imagine you have two children. Imagine you have two grandchildren. Imagine you have two pets that you love. You love them both and you want the best for all of them. Let's just stick with the pets for one second, right? Imagine that you have two dogs, one chihuahua and the other is a rottweiler, okay? One little and one big. Now, Whatever you feed the Chihuahua, you can't feed the Rottweiler. Whatever you feed the Rottweiler, you can't feed the Chihuahua. The Chihuahua might want to cuddle up under a blanket and be on your lap, or the Chihuahua might have endless energy where the Rottweiler is a little bit more, you know, uh, likes to chill out and relax, okay? Unless, you know, until provoked. Think about this analogy. You love both dogs and you want to provide what both dog needs, but the dogs need something completely separate and you have to individualize their meals, their walking schedule, their interactions, their living spaces. Well, that essentially is equity. In your heart, you love both dogs. They're both your babies, but you have to provide something different, something individualized, something tailored, or as we like to use this term, curated for each of these different dogs. Essentially, that is equity. Providing specialized, in some case, individualized or contextualized resources to different groups. In this case, two different dogs or two different groups of dogs, right? That's a little bit what this idea of equity is. Now, you may have also heard of this particular term, CRT. It's all over the news, critical race theory. Critical race theory asserts that race is a social construct. Society helps to create and shape race and what race is. And as a social construct, race and racism affect every social institution and every social system that we are involved in and that we interact with them, whether it is the educational system, the banking system, the legal system, the systems that we interact in, that people need, that society relies upon. Race and racism affects and interacts and works within and is embedded within each of these individual systems. And social construct, again, believes in the idea that society created race. It created race 
to benefit some and to hinder others. Now, scientifically, biologically, physically, race is not real. Humans are 99% genetically the same across races. That's scientific. However, socially, not scientifically, but socially, in terms of group interaction, race is very real. And race impacts every facet of a person's life or group's life, especially people of color in the United States. Let me give you another analogy, for example. Everybody has seen images like this, okay? This is Santa Claus and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Now, coming a little closer. Santa Claus isn't real. I'm sorry to break the news. Santa Claus is not real. Rudolph isn't real. Now, don't let your four and five-year-old children, nieces and nephews or grandchildren hear that. Come a little closer. Santa Claus isn't real, okay? But think about this. We're approaching the holidays. Some of us are going to spend hundreds to thousands of dollars playing Santa. Little kids are going to wait up at night to see if Rudolph is going to fly through the sky with his bright red nose. So although these are made up concepts, images, and ideas, these are very real and have very real financial consequences on our lives and on our wallets and in our pockets. All right. So think about this. Santa Claus is a social construct. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, a social construct. They're not real. They don't really exist. But in a social world, in our interactions, particularly around the holidays, these are very real. And yes, Santa Claus definitely exists. You ever seen this line to take pictures with Santa at the mall, snaking and weaving all through the mall? Hundreds of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars spent every, 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 every holiday by people playing Santa. Okay, so it's not real scientifically, biologically, but socially, very real, very real consequences. That's a social construct. And that what is that's what CRT helps us to understand. Race is not scientifically or biologically real. Socially, interaction-wise, it's very real. Real as a hundred dollar bill where you can flip it over and see the person's face. You look, hold up to the light, real like that. Okay, so hopefully, you kind of understand those concepts a little bit. And lastly, to kind of close this and wrap this up with a bow on these terms ethnic studies, since race is not scientific fact, but it is social fact, very real social fact. Ethnic studies is here to kind of give us the histories and experiences of racial groups in the United States. Black, African-American, Latinx, Asian, indigenous, women and women of color, etc. Historically, these groups have all been marginalized, pushed aside, cast aside for various reasons. And with that exclusion of these particular races, their experience, their social experiences, historically and still contemporarily, have differed and been very different from mainstream American history and experiences. In the case of African Americans, our people, our collective experience in America has been definitely wholly impacted by race, by what you see on the outside, by the skin color, the hair texture, the physical features that we have that come directly from our African heritage. As a result of these differences, as a result of being excluded because of these differences in a lot of cases, our culture, our music, our art, our interactions, the way we talk, the way we talk with each other, and our cultural contributions to America and the rest of the world, they reflect are very unique experiences as a group. And no racialized experience has had more impact on us as African-Americans in the United States than being enslaved. As a matter of fact, enslavement, the unfortunate circumstances of enslavement, the horrible, treacherous, deadly, 
experiences around the slave trade and the transatlantic slave trade, as horrible as chattel slavery has been and was for us as a people, Black people, African-American people, still created beauty, still created tons of contributions, tons of inventions, tons of things that we still use today, even in the midst of all this death and danger and despair, even still today. Black people are taking lemons and creating lemonade. And one of those sweet lemonade sips is music. And we'll talk a little bit about African-American musical styles. Now come close again. African-American people musically invented rock and roll. Just want to put that out there before I go into this next slide. Ethnic studies. And African-American music, right? Now you see this artwork. Music is art. Music says something to you that it may not say to me and vice versa. And you see these different artistic images. They say something to you that they may not say to me. But each of these images is a reflection of African-American musical styles. From soul and R&B to this image of the banjo lesson that represents the blues, to hip hop, to rock and roll, soul music, funk, the blues, and of course, gospel music. Now, as black people, people of African descent were taken and colonized in the United States, we began to understand and learn the colonizer's language, English. We also began to adopt and take the colonizer's religion in a lot of cases, which was Christianity from the you know, church standpoint. And then we add this African identity and this ingenuity and this rhythm and this soul. And as a result, Black people, African-American people who brought over instruments like the drum, the tambourine, the banjo, the guitar, and others, right? We brought that rhythm. We brought that soul from Africa. We mixed that up with the colonized religion and the colonized language, and we mixed that up with the terrible experience of slavery and enslavement. Black people in those fields and working in those plantations and working the farms, et cetera, began to create work songs, field songs. Sometimes you may refer to them or hear them referred to as field hollers. And as we worked in the fields and the farms and the factories from can't see in the morning to can't see at night, those field songs, those work songs, wait in the water, swing low, sweet cherry, the heave, ho, call and response, methods and techniques all those things get woven into musical styles and eventually those form the foundations of what we know today as gospel music gospel music started off as a gumbo part african rhythm part religious doctrine part prayer to god for help help us get through this oppressive state part praise for god for getting us through these oppressive states even the gift of life, although enslaved, gospel music, those field songs and those work songs began to lay the foundations for gospel music to be born. Even life in that extreme circumstance and unfortunate circumstance of enslavement, gospel music evolved. Gospel music is the foundation for many of the African-American musical art forms. And gospel gives way to the blues. And blues music comes out of the family tree of gospel. And the blues music and gospel also inspire jazz music. Each of those three, blues, jazz, and of course, gospel music, those are the holy trinity of African-American musical style. And they birth rock and roll. They birth R&B. Those musical styles, gospel, the blues, 
jazz music, they birthed soul music, funk, disco, and also hip hop and R&B music. So without gospel, without the field songs giving way to gospel, which gives way later on to blues and jazz, we don't have hip hop music that we all know today. And each of these black musical genres has played a part in the American cultural soundtrack. You can't go anywhere today and not hear jazz. You can't turn on any station and or any TV channel and not hear the influence of hip hop or see the influence of hip hop music, whether we're talking about McDonald's or whether we're talking about Walmart or Honey Nut Cheerios or any of those things. Mainstream society pulls from African-American musical genres, all right? Black music informs. It tells the listener what's going on. Just ask Marvin Gaye. Black music inspires. It provides an aspirational thought and feeling to uplift, to motivate, and to help get you to tomorrow. Biggie Small said it was all a dream. He was aspiring the way to see himself in these magazines and in a limousine and things of that sort. So from the blues, a person telling their song, we can, or telling their story of despair and hurt, we get a song like Dear Mama or Michael Jackson, Heal the World. From gospel music, we get the soundtrack to the civil rights era, the We Shall Overcomes, the Ain't Gonna Let Nobody Turn Us Around, those particular types of musical styles that helped fuel this revolution, civil rights, and also the Black Panther and Black Power movement of the late 60s and 70s. Say it loud, I'm Black and proud. African-American musical styles, especially gospel music, helps to lay the soundtrack and the foundation for much of American history. Black music itself, it moves, it touches the spirit, it gets you emotional. As the youngsters like to say, it puts you in your feelings. That soul element is something that other musical genres outside of black music just do not have in the same way, nor can they recreate it because it has roots back to our particular experiences. It has roots back to Africa. And as we have gospel music to thank for a lot of that, because it's part of the bedrock, the foundation, the origin of all Black music. Gospel music, art, ethnic studies, the equity trinity, gospel music, art, ethnic studies, the equity trinity. Keep in mind, each of these Black musical genres from gospel to blues to jazz to rock and roll to funk to R&B, hip hop, so forth and so on. It comes out of the experiences of people of African descent. So when we study ethnic studies and music being one of these cultural parts of ethnic studies, these are the types of things that will be studied. What you have to understand is how the experiences influence this music. That's for a different day different time. At this point, I'm going to stop sharing. And I want to say thank you all for allowing me the opportunity and the time to be with you tonight. Thank you to the choir. Thank you to Los Madonos College and the community. And also thank you to Professor Sylvester Henderson for allowing this opportunity and for being a man of the people. All right. I'm Dr. Khalid White again, ethnic studies professor and I'm Thank you so much for allowing me to be with you tonight on this choral adventure. Equity, Trinity, ethnic studies, art, African-American gospel music. Peace.